national postgraduate colloquium poster research poster competition. Uh, before we start, allow me to just uh, remind you of some house rules that we have here. Uh, firstly, I would like to remind all those who put on their camera to dress appropriately and would remind everyone to also keep muted while we listen to uh, our honored guest speaker today. Uh, and then secondly, uh, the training today is pre-recorded so that there are no interruptions during our session. Please pay attention and listen carefully to the session uh, and inshallah we will all benefit from it. And when you do, if you have any questions, you can post your question in the comment section uh, and in the message section, sorry. So any questions, once the, uh, the speaker is done speaking, uh, the, the speaker will, will uh, come on live and we will ask the uh, honored speaker uh, the questions. I will read out your questions. So please uh, don't be shy to ask any questions within the chat. With that, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, young Burbahagia deputy deans, deputy directors, heads of departments, head of research, head of international and global networking, professors, associate professors, doctors, and academic members, and last but not least, our graduates, the young researchers and scholars in the making, and all the participants in today's uh, blessed program, I welcome you with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are able to convene in this session to be guided by our trained speaker on how to conduct our research at its best. And my name is Fatima Al Talib. I am from the International Islamic University of Malaysia, and I shall be your moderator for today's session, inshallah. I want to thank all the organizers for uh, selecting me and offering me this honored opportunity to moderate with you all today. And ladies and gentlemen, before I proceed, let me introduce our trainer today, Madam Noor Zilatoun Radia bint Hamzi. So Madam Noor Zilatoun is currently a senior librarian in the research support section at Dar al Hikma Library, International Islamic University of Malaysia. Uh, she has, she holds a bachelor degree in Islamic revealed knowledge and heritage and human sciences from the IIUM and then went on to study for a master degree in library and information science from the same university. She leads the unit in preparation of IIUM publication data and intellectual property, copyright, as well as the Secretariat for the Star Rating Malaysia Research Assessment, Myra and Tetara. She used to be a licensed librarian for several kulias, faculties, such as the Faculty of Law, Faculty of Information Communication Technology, Faculty of Engineering, and Faculty of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. With that introduction, I would like to now invite everyone to pay attention to Madame Noor Zilatoun's training on the Zotero referencing tool, Bismillah. And I would also like to uh, remind all participants that during the session, uh, please write your questions in the chat box so we can return your questions during the Q&A after we listen to Madame Noor Zilatoun. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Nazila Dunodia Hazmi from IUM Library. I've been given uh, a topic uh, for this presentation, which is Zotero uh, Reference Management Tool. So, inshallah, I will share with all of you on how to use this Zotero and what are the features available. Okay, uh, it's very good to have uh, one bibliographic management tool to assist you. Uh, in thesis writing, uh, especially, uh, it's because um, uh, most of these uh, reference management tools 
uh, just uh, I mean the function of it uh, uh, to assist you in compiling everything that you want to refer in the future uh, and everything that I mean uh, references that are suitable for your topic okay you put it in one place and then since it is in one place which is your Zotero library for example then you can organize everything you can put it in uh, several folders if you want again okay? you have to manage uh, all the information that you have in your library okay and then uh, uh, at the same time, you can also, uh, but this is the best part, lah. okay, you, uh, while, while you write your thesis in Word, you can also cite, okay, from Zotero, you got the information from Zotero and uh, put it in Word, okay. The best part of this uh, Zotero is you can uh, build network, you can uh, find new friends, you can share your sources with them, okay? And then you can also join uh, groups that have been created by Zotero communities before, okay? Uh, so these are among uh, advantages and things that you may get uh, when you use Zotero uh, throughout your uh, study or while writing your thesis, inshallah. Okay, without further ado, I will show you on how to use this Zotero and I believe uh, at least some of you might fall in love with it again okay? uh, and you can uh, exploit more and then use it in your um, uh, thesis writing and uh, the, the main thing is no need for you to do it from scratch, especially in uh, citing and referencing. Okay, because it's there for you already, uh, immediately transferred from Zotero into your word, but you need to just ensure that the information is correct, that's it. Okay, in order for you to transfer, uh, I mean, the metadata, everything, it's already done for you. Uh, you have to do quality check um, a bit, whether the information is correct or not, then do the correction, done. Okay, then after that, you use the Zotero to just, um, I mean, let it do the job. Okay, it will uh, create the citation, it will create bibliography uh, by its own. Okay, you can uh, change uh, the uh, citation style that you want. Okay, with one click, you just uh, uh, immediately see that it's... Uh, change to a new citation style that you uh, have uh, selected okay so this is what uh, the the best thing uh, that you will find um, in using this uh, zotero or any other bibliographic management tools that are available on the net okay we have among others are uh, mendeley uh, refwork and endnote Okay, but not all these uh, bibliographic management tools are free for you. One of the example of the free management uh, reference management tool is Zotero because it's an open source. Okay, uh, you can just immediately go to the page, download uh, the uh, Zotero desktop, and you can also use two uh, versions of this Zotero. One is Zotero web page and the other one is Zotero desktop. Now it's time for me to show you what are the features of Zotero and how to use it okay, in more detail, inshallah. Okay, this is where you may download Zotero okay, from, from the page zotero.org. Okay, uh, before we go to this download button, let me uh, uh, show you this uh, Zotero web page. Okay, uh, before you uh, can enjoy all the features that are there, okay, you have to sign up first, you have to create a Zotero account first, okay, and then you log in. Okay, but before that, uh, you can go to these groups, okay, and check uh, what are the groups that have been uh, created earlier by Zotero uh, communities. You can search it by using keyword, okay, or you can search by um, key in name of the people that you know, for example, and search whether this uh, 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 the one that you uh, uh, try to find is uh, uh, with the Zotero or not. Okay, 
and then uh, another uh, thing is uh, documentation where you can uh, uh, seek for uh, help or maybe you can read more on uh, the features that are available and uh, to understand more on every feature, you can just go to this documentation and browse uh, because it's already there. And let's say you are interested on syncing or collaboration and backup, then uh, click at the uh, hyperlink, you will get all the details and you may also read or you may also explore uh, Zotero from this page, okay? And then uh, forums, it also has forums. If let's say you uh, don't uh, understand uh, on a certain topic when you go to documentation, for example, then you need help, you need explanation. You can go uh, and go to this forum. You can uh, post question, okay? You can uh, uh, read whatever discussions that have been uh, uh, posted earlier or um, maybe uh, discussed earlier okay and it's related to you then you just go and read it from there okay okay now uh, we uh, okay in order for you to be since you are new for example if you are a new user for zotero you go to this register to sign up yes i mean uh, your and and create a new account okay they just need your username email address and you have to confirm your email and put password and verify the password just tick here that you are not a robot and register okay Okay, then after you have registered, go to login. Okay, put either the username or email and then uh, followed by the password. Okay, and then log in to Zotero. Okay. You log in and go to the web library. You will see that there is uh, nothing there since we are new to Zotero, is it? Okay, there is no uh, resources or references that uh, have been added in our library yet. Okay, uh, before we add in new references, I want to just uh, show you the uh, user interface. I mean, the, the on the screen, features on the screen, what are available on the screen. Okay, we can see on the left-hand side, Okay, this is our library. We can, we can add in a new folder or new collection here. Just rename, rename uh, the file. Chapter one, for example, okay, and then enter. It will automatically create, uh, I mean, create the uh, folder. And then if you see these three dots there, you can rename, delete, and uh, add in new sub collection. Sub collection means this folder will be added uh, below the parent folder or below, below the main folder. Okay. Like for example, this it will be a sub folder. Okay. And then uh, in the middle, it will consist of all items that you add in your library. For each item, it must have uh, details of it, is it? Okay, for all the metadata, you may get it on the right hand side. Okay. Uh, okay, and then uh, in the middle, in order for you to add in uh, new documents or new items or new records or new references, okay, you just, uh, you, you have several options for it. One is uh, by clicking at this plus sign. This is for you to add in item manually. Okay, we have uh, this item type is given for you already. You select from this item type because different item type may have different template. Okay, so just a click, uh, for example, we want to add in a book. To click book, okay. And then it give you, this is a book icon. Okay, and then on the right, you will see the template for item type book. Okay. 
if you compare with the, let's say for example, journal article, click journal article, you see the icon is also different. Okay, this indicate that this is journal article and then the template also different. It's suitable for journal article. Okay, this is the information for a book. Okay, okay and then uh, why, is, why is it empty? Remember I said earlier that this option is for you to add in manually. Okay, you have to type in on the right hand side all the information that are relevant or that are important. Okay, then you will see uh, it appear after you entered the information. Like for example, uh, this is journal article. Okay, you type in uh, name of the journal. Introduction to science for example okay and then the author is let's say the name is uh, Michael Jackson for example okay so you have to put the uh, last name first Jackson followed by Michael okay and the publication publication uh, name of the journal uh, journal on the example okay and then uh, is it is this important the volume yes of course because uh, volume must appear in the citation so you have to put this information this is a must okay let's say volume volume 30 okay the issue number is issue number two this is only example eh? okay page is page number 12 until 34 for example and then the date is the year publication so the year is 2021. Uh, series, do we have this? Uh, is it important for us to put series? And most of the time, general article, article there is no series information. Okay. And then if, if it has any, you just put it there, but it's, uh, it's optional. Uh, it's not a, a, a must or, or compulsory for you to add in. Uh, same goes to series title, series text, general abbreviation. This is for law students. You can use this general abbreviation, but for others, uh, you have to put it in full. Okay. Uh, DOI number, if any. ISSN, ISSN number, uh, if any. Uh, short title, if any. URL, um, and uh, all this. Okay. So that's it. We go to our book. Okay, let's see the title of the book is uh, Introduction to Research Astrology. Let's see, want to read this book. Okay. okay, and then the author is Brown White, for example. Yeah, the name is Brown uh, White Brown. So we put Brown first, since it is last name, and then uh, White. Uh, if there is any serious uh, information you put, okay, volume, everything. So, edition, edition number two. This publication is uh, a Greenwood. Publisher is uh, IIUM Press. Okay, date is 2015. Okay. Okay, this is the main thing that we need to put. Okay, this is the way for you to add in uh, item manually, okay? Then another way for you to add in information is by just, um, uh, you go to this, the second icon here is, uh, we call it as identifier, okay? From this identifier, we have a number of options. One is by using, I mean, if you have the URL, you just uh, copy, I copy and paste it here. Or if you have the ISBN number of uh, a book, you just paste it here. The URI number of an article, you paste it in this box, as well as PubMed ID and archive ID if you have uh, found any articles with, I mean, that has this PubMed ID and archive ID, you can also put it here and it will automatically transfer everything into or save everything into your Zotero library. 
uh, I think in detail, I will show you in the desktop uh, version of this Zotero because uh, Zotero desktop will have more features added compared to this Zotero web page. Okay, so next uh, discussion will be in the Zotero uh, desktop. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you download Zotero desktop, this is uh, the uh, screen that you will see. It's quite different, is it? Okay. Uh, but the features, I mean, the arrangement are still the same. On the left, we can see all our library. I mean, uh, the library and the folders. Okay. And then in the middle, we can see um, uh, the, the records that we have saved. And then on the right hand side, we can see all the details of that particular record. Remember that we have added uh, two items manually before. One is a book and another one is a, an article inside journal. Okay, uh, how to get the same uh, references uh, in our Zotero desktop? you can have a number of uh, computers or a number of um, gadgets with you, as long as you use the same Zotero account, you will get the same information, the same references in your library and in your Zotero library. So how to sync information in Zotero web page just now in this uh, uh, desktop? Okay, now, the first thing that you need to do is, uh, if you are using window, you go to edit, okay, and then you go to preferences. Okay, now for uh, those who use uh, MacBook, okay, you go to Zotero and then go to preferences. Okay, so the next window, the preferences window are the same for a MacBook and for uh, window users. Okay, okay, you just go to the second tab, which is sync. You put your username and password that you have created with Zotero and then you set up syncing. When it is successful, you will see your username and then unlink account. This is if you change your mind, you can just click here to unlink and it will remove all the data from this computer. Okay. Uh, now uh, we already synced what we have saved in the uh, Zotero web page into this uh, computer. Let's check. Okay, you go to uh, on top of the right corner uh, of the screen, you will see this icon. This is the sync icon. Okay, you just click this sync with zotero.org. Because all information that we have saved earlier will be uh, in the Zotero server. So now it will also transfer in our computer. Okay, so click this uh, button or the sync icon. It depends on your internet connection. Okay, now we have it listed. You see, we have two uh, items already added in um, in our uh, new computer here. Since before this, we are using um, uh, Zotero web page and it's stored in the Zotero server. So now it's also stored in our computer. Okay. Uh, okay, um, for the next option for us to add in new documents or new records, I prefer to show it from here, okay, from this Zotero desktop. Before this, we have done it here. Okay, you see, uh, in Zotero web page, we have uh, a shorter list of uh, items, but now in this Zotero desktop, we have many more actually. Uh, the type of item that you may add manually. Okay, this is just straightforward. Uh, just uh, select whichever item that you want to add, and then as I have shown earlier, you put in information in on the right hand side all the metadata that is uh, uh, important. Then it's uh, good to go. Okay, now another option as I said. So this uh, we have several options. Uh, let us go and use the ISBN number for, let's say, we want to add in new book. And then we don't want to add in manually. 
we have this ISBN number, so why don't we use this identifier to add in uh, this new book? Okay. Okay, let's say we have uh, a book and then uh, we can uh, uh, check the uh, ISBN number. Uh, let's say this is the ISBN number that we have. Okay, you copy this ISBN number. Uh, okay, remember the title, okay? Context, contextualizing openness, situating open science. Okay. And now we only have the ISBN number. Okay. Uh, and then from this identifier, you just, because we copied already and just paste it here and click enter. Before this, we have two. Now it's added another one, which is uh, number three. And this is we use identifier to add in the item. Okay, and then uh, everything uh, already here because it got it from the uh, page just now. Okay, all the metadata, metadata is transferred uh, into this uh, uh, detail. Okay, but please don't rely 100% on what uh, Zotero has transferred. Uh, you have to also check. Uh, whether the information is correct or not. Because when we cite this item, if the information is incorrect, so it will appear uh, in our word with incorrect information. Okay, let's say this is uh, done already, place publication already there, publisher, place, I mean, date of uh, publication and the page number, everything is here already. Okay, um, uh, uh, this. Third example I want to show is the DOI number. This is normally recent uh, journal articles have this DOI number. Okay, let's say let's say we want to save this uh, particular article, okay, in Zotero because we want to cite it later. Okay, what we need to do is we check whether this article has DOI number or not. Okay, then you just copy this DOI number. Copy this and then go back to Zotero and by using identifier, you paste uh, the DOI number there and click enter. See, it's uh, added over there. Okay, no need for you to type it manually. It's with one click. Okay, and then it also transferred all the metadata from the original source and put it in this in detail. Okay, but please make sure the information, all information is correct uh, before you go to the next uh, reference or references. Another way for you to add references is by uh, just drag and drop all files that you have already saved in your computer. Let's say I want to save these three articles into my Zotero library. So what I need to do is just highlight all three and then drag this file and put it in, uh, in the middle. Drop in the middle, okay? So now you will see Zotero uh, wants to read the, this particular records. Okay, it will read one by one and process um, whether uh, it can transfer the metadata straight away into library, uh, Zotero library or not. Okay, it was uh, indicate by using uh, this symbol, either the cross symbol or tick symbol. So tick means successful, cross means it cannot read or cannot process this uh, particular document. Okay. Uh -huh. We have uh, the last one, and uh, I mean, still in process. Okay. Okay. Now, out of three, we have two successfully um, uh, transferred into Zotero, and then the last, the, the first one is not successful. Okay. We can see from here the last two is already there. Okay, it's already there. You just check uh, the information whether it's correct or not. Okay, let's let's assume that everything is uh, perfect. Okay, and then how about this one? 
the item or the one that is not successfully processed by Zotero. What we should do next is to, uh, since this, you see the, the uh, details are not uh, supposed to be like this. We need to have the uh, okay, item type, title, author, abstract, right? But here we uh, do not have that uh, kind of template. So we want to uh, uh, make Zotero to uh, make it appear. I mean, all the uh, template that is needed for uh, this particular article to be appeared on the right hand side so that we can either manually add the details or we can also use another option which is maybe uh, by using uh, identifier to uh, add it uh, uh, automatically okay okay you just right click okay and then create parent item okay uh, and will pop up like this it will pop up like this. Uh, either you have the UI number, expand number, or PubMed and archive ID or not. Say we don't have it, okay? Let's say we don't have it. Then you just go and uh, 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 click manual entry. Or if you have this, you go and click create parent item. This is for you to add in manually. Like we did before. So if let's say we have the DOI number, you just paste uh, the number uh, inside the box and then you click create parent item. Okay, then it will automatically uh, read from the DOI and then uh, if there is a, I mean, successfully transferred all the metadata, you will see on the right, the detail are already there. Okay, it's already filled in uh, uh, automatically without you uh, do it manually. Okay, since we have uh, many in our reference or in our library, uh, we tend to add uh, two records but with the same item. Okay. So in order for you to detect duplication or duplicate items, it's very easy, no need for you to uh, check one by one, but just enough for you to go to duplicate items. Just click here, duplicate items. Then, oh, actually we have uh, the, the same item, but in two different records. So it has duplication. So what to do next is just click at the item, Okay, and uh, Zotero will detect that this actually uh, duplicate, same record. So what we can do next is uh, check the version. So which one is the older, which one is the latter. Okay, then if let's say you want to retain the first one and you want to remove, I mean, override the second one, you just select the first one and merge two items. So now there is no duplication anymore because all in our library is already unique. Okay, this is another simple way for you to check for duplication. Okay, now we have a number of references already added in our Zotero library. So what to do next is, if let's say you have a, 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 a big number of references in the middle, so it's quite difficult for you to find a particular record. So um, uh, this is uh, uh, the time for you to organize what you have in the library. You may, you may sort everything according to your need. Okay, you can sort by title, you can sort by uh, creator, you can also sort by date added. Okay, if let's say you want to add more uh, column, you can just click this icon and then you can, let's say for example, you want to add date. Uh, so click here date and it will um, add in the date uh, column uh, like this. Okay, it depends or it ups to you uh, what kind of uh, information that you want to appear in the middle here. You can just add uh, as you wish, okay? Okay, and then another thing is you can add notes uh, here or you can add note from here. We have two options for you to add note. Okay, either new standalone note 
or you may add child note okay another uh, uh, features that uh, are available in this zotero is you can also attach document in this uh, uh, in the middle by using either attach link to uri attach stored copy of file and attach link to file this is all uh, options of attachment that you may do you just explore because it's very easy and straightforward okay uh, and then uh, the other thing that I want to highlight is that you can also add text. Text is like keywords or subject index, okay, where you can uh, uh, group uh, certain uh, articles in one particular subject matter or keyword. Like for example, uh, this introduction to research methodology, we may add a uh, tag like for example, research methodology. Okay, um, another um, book that we want to add as research methodology, maybe this one. Let's try this one. Okay, we add research methodology. Okay, is there already? Mm -hmm. Now, automatically on the left hand side, down below, you will get one tag created, one group of tag created, which is research methodology. Okay. When we click at this research methodology tag, you will find in the middle, it only highlight or filter um, uh, information or records that are under research methodology. This is another way for you to organize all the records, all the uh, references in your library. How to remove the filter? You just uh, click again. Okay, click again uh, on this tag and it will remove the filter and you will get everything in the list. Let's say I add another uh, um, tag of subject, open science, data of the ship, uh, open science, add more data sharing okay and then we go here we already there at uh, now we have three data sharing open science and research methodology okay we have three tags already inserted or added okay and then uh, let's say we 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 can also give color for each of our text, but the, the maximum text that you may put color on it is six. Okay, six text. Let's say data sharing. Okay, I have two here. So I want to add color, a color uh, for this uh, specific tag. You just uh, right click and then you assign color to the tag. Let's say I want to use this uh, pink color. Okay, position number one. Okay, then click set color. So it gave you, can you see this specific uh, references uh, which are under data sharing tag will be assigned with pink color. If you go back and select, I mean click this again, you will find that everything will be in the list and then okay, the pink color will be under this data sharing. Okay, and then open science, maybe we want to assign color for this uh, open science in green and then position number two and set color. So we have like this. Okay, when you uh, click again, you will get everything, but then we can see or we can tell that this pink color is on data sharing and then in green color will be on open science. This is another way that you may organize all records that you have. If you have a, a few records here, let's say for example, 100 references, then it, it will be more organized if you do this way. So another way for you to organize your records is by adding a new uh, collection. Like just now, uh, um, at the beginning of the session, uh, we have um, uh, created one collection, is it? So which is chapter one. Okay, under chapter one, we have intro. 
Okay, so what uh, we can do next, okay, all this that we have add in the middle, okay, will be automatically uh, stored in this My Library. Okay, how to, uh, I mean, uh, organize it accordingly, you may, let's say, for example, highlight all record that is, or that, are, that will be under chapter one, for example, okay? Let's say this is all chapter one. Okay, and then you highlight everything and just drag and drop in chapter one. Okay, and then this is not a uh, cut and paste, but it actually will copy everything from my library and put and transfer the thing in chapter one. So before this, we have nothing in uh, chapter one, but now we have selected uh, some of the references from my library and transfer it into chapter one. Okay, and then how about intro? Now we don't have any anything in this intro, right? So let's say from the my library, we identify that this is, uh, uh, let's say, let's say these records will be in uh, introduction. Okay, you highlight everything and then put it, uh, drag it in intro folder. Okay, everything will remain in my library because default everything will be in the my library. But then it will also copy the things, copy the records that we have highlighted. Okay, we copied uh, the uh, references just now into intro. That is the way for you to um, add in uh, references from my library uh, uh, into a specific collection or specific folder. Okay. Uh, let's say you mistakenly copied uh, a reference or record that is not supposed to be in chapter one. Then what uh, you should do uh, next is let's say you highlight this particular record and then you right click. But please uh, make sure don't move this item to trash. If you move this item to trash, it will be in your uh, uh, in the trash bin, okay? As well as what we have in the library, my library will be also in the trash bin, okay? What you need to do is actually remove this specific item from this uh, uh, current uh, folder or collection. You just remove item from collection and click OK. It will not be here in chapter one, but it will remain in the My Library. I think that's it um, for um, Zotero uh, desktop. So we add in documents already by using either uh, manual entry or by using identifier, or you can also add in uh, a note uh, for your uh, record or for your, for your reference. You may also add, uh, I mean, attachment uh, into it. Okay. So once you have done this, you may organize everything in place. You can add in notes, you can add in text, you can color or the text uh, but the maximum is six colors okay and then um, info here please make sure everything is correct you are good to go for the site while you write okay okay now we are in our uh, word document let's say we have uh, written something in our assignment or thesis so what we do next is uh, go to zotero if let's say in uh, in your word document you notice that there is no Zotero in the menu bar, what to do next is you go to Zotero and then uh, click preferences. For window users, you go to edit and find preferences. Okay, so now I go to preferences and then it opened already. Go to tab number five in in the row. Okay, and then you click word processes. I already installed uh, this add-in in my Microsoft Word, so there, there is no problem. But for those who haven't installed it yet, just click install Microsoft Word add-in. That's it. And then you reopen your Word and you will notice that Zotero is there already for you.
The first thing that you need to do is to check uh, what kind of citation style that uh, uh, we have I mean, set uh, uh, by default for this Zotero. Go click document preferences and then make sure that um, it select a citation style that we want to use. Like for example, I want to use APA citation style 7 edition. Okay. This is the citation style that I want to use. Then select or highlight and then click OK. So now, uh, now when whenever we add uh, a new uh, citation, that it will follow APA citation style seven edition. Okay. So let's say the first uh, paragraph here, we want to add in a citation, single citation for it. So what we can do next is just click add edit citation. Okay, and then um, I prefer to use classic view because I want to see everything in my library. Okay, let's say I select uh, this, this is the one that I've uh, referred for uh, paragraph number one, for example. Okay, and then straight away you click okay. Then you will see this is already cited automatically without doing anything. You just with one click, it transferred everything from Zotero into this Word document. Okay. Then example number two is that, okay, if let's say this doesn't have space here, uh, so you put cursor and you space it so that it will have a space uh, in between. Okay. Like for example, the second uh, example is I want to um, add in multiple sources. What we can do um, is that uh, you click this multiple sources. Okay. You add two or more uh, references because maybe this paragraph uh, have been uh, mentioned by this particular um, researchers before. Okay, so let's say I have three uh, references that I've mentioned about this second paragraph. So I selected all three and then click OK. So you see it's already there. Now we go to example number three. Let's say uh, we want to have only uh, the date without the name of the author to be appear in the in-text citations. What we could do for it is you just add uh, edit citation. Okay, and then um, let's say this is the document. Okay, and then you take suppress author suppress author and then click OK. So it gives you only the year without the author information. So it will be um, uh, good to have in the in-text citation with the name already uh, provided there. We need only the year to be appeared in the in-text citation. So this is the way you just suppress the author and you will get only the date. Okay. Um, Last example is that in order for you to add a page number, you just highlight, let's say, for example, this is a book. Okay, this is the book that we uh, used to refer to and to quote uh, this last sentence of paragraph. So, and then uh, before we click go, put under this page. Uh, let's say page number 34. We, we got this information from page number 34 of this particular book. Okay, and then click OK. You will see that it's uh, not only have a name of the author and year, but it also add in a page number as well. Okay. Let's say after that, when you realize that, for example, these multiple sources, it doesn't follow the year accordingly, okay, like this one, 2014, 2013, and then 2021. You want to have the uh, previous one first, followed by the letters at the end. So what you should do is you just highlight all this uh, citation and then click again at edit citation. Then you rearrange accordingly, okay? You just drag, I mean, uh, this in the middle and yes.
Yes, like this. Okay, you put it this way according to the year until you you um, satisfy with it and then click enter. It will change accordingly. So this is uh, very easy. Okay. Let's say we have done uh, in the in-text citation. So we want to produce a bibliography for it. Okay, just put in uh, the uh, topic, okay? And then, okay, then go back to Zotero and just put in, uh, just click in this add edit bibliography. You will get, with one click only, you will get everything. Okay, the bibliography is all already there and been created for you according to the citation style that you have selected earlier. Okay, and it arranged according to alphabet already. Okay. okay, now when we have this bibliography already in the list, but then suddenly you notice, oh, there's a mistake here. It's not supposed to be situating, but it should be situating. So how to make it correct? You cannot do it from word. You have to correct it from the source, which is our Zotero library. Then you have to go back uh, to the Zotero, and then you have to correct it from here. Where is the title just now? Okay, this is the one. Contextualizing openness. Uh, situating, supposed, supposedly to be situating. So we go on the right hand side and delete whichever information that is not supposed to be there. Okay, then let's say for example, we already correct uh, the information situating supposedly. Okay, then we go back to our word and then, oh, why it uh, doesn't change anything? Don't worry, you have to refresh. You have to click refresh first in order for it to be, I mean, the change to be um, taken, okay? Uh, you can see it uh, straight away after you click this refresh button. From situating to situating. So this is the uh, correct uh, uh, spelling. So you have done the correction already uh, from Zotero and you refresh uh, in this Word document, you will get the correct one after that. Okay, I think that's it uh, for the excitement because we have done all the in-text citation, we have done all the uh, references in the, in the place already. So uh, I think we have done with our thesis, we complete everything. Uh, thank you uh, to Zotero because it helps us it helps us a lot, uh, no need for us to do it from E until Z, but actually uh, Zotero have uh, done it halfway. We just have to make sure that everything is in place, everything is correct, then it's good. So we can save our time uh, without focusing on this only. We can uh, now focusing on other more important uh, things to do uh, for our research. Okay, so that's it. I think uh, I hope that uh, it's clear. And if you have any problem or any question, you may ask in the Q&A session after this. So thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much to Madam Nur Zalatun. That was a very beneficial and insightful um, session on this research tool, Zot Zotero. Um, and before we head to our Q&A, uh, please, if you have any Q&A questions, type it in now because we're about to head to it. But just before then, I want to give a, a quick recap uh, so we can refresh ourselves of all the beneficial information that Madam Noor Zalatun uh, told us. Um, so as we know, um, have learned, it's a very versatile uh, and exciting tool to use. And we can access it at either zotero.org or on our desktop. And the cool thing is that we can sync it across devices, making it very easy to access. 
and it, uh, as uh, Madam Haslina also mentioned, it can it deals with different footnote styles, which is an advantage over other referencing tools such as Medley. Um, we can also either manually or uh, you know via URL, ISBN, or GOI, uh, you know, put in our uh, citation, or we could you know copy and drop the a file, which I find very useful. Um, we could organize our uh, citations based on, you know, our references based on either color, there are six different color schemes, or we could, um, you know, based on collection, there are many different ways of organizing it. Uh, and we can also install Zotero as a Microsoft Word add-on, and that will also save us a lot of time. Uh, and we can select the default citation style to our preferences, for example, if it's APA or Chicago. Um, and if we want to customize, uh, you know, what we want to add in our reference, whether we want it only to show the date or we want to rearrange the date, there's an option for that um, or the page number. And a very uh, ve thing that will save, I know, a lot of us a lot of time would be the bibliography that is already organized according to alphabetical order. And I know many of us might have struggled with that in our researches. So if there are any mistakes, as Madam Nur Zaytun pointed out, we need to quality check. Even though all these things are automatic, we have to quality check, make sure everything's correct. And if there are any mistakes in the bibliography tool, for example, there are, there's a solution. We just go to the source on Zotero and we correct whatever word might be misspelled or wrong. And then we refresh our Microsoft Word and it will you know, have the, the correction. Um, so, with that recap, um, I would really like to thank Madam Noor Zenitun once again. And as um, as the Madam Noor Madam Noor Zenitun to unmute, so we can, inshallah, benefit from her knowledge. Uh, so. The, before I ask the questions, I just want to read what Madam Haslina said, because I think it, it was quite beneficial. Um, Madam Haslina had mentioned, like I'd said, that it, it can deal with footnote style, uh, and hence you can shift from footnote style or endnote style or in-text citation style. Uh, and it can deal with Arabic sources too, except that many Arabic sources have to be keyed in details manually, as Madam uh, Nur Zeletun also explained. And uh, this session it will be it's being recorded right now, and it will be uploaded to the IRK website if you want to access it afterwards. And so the question, the first question for you, Madam, is can we import information of a source that we can already key that that it has already been keyed into word under references tool into zotero this is from hazizan can we import information of a source that has already been keyed into word under the references tool in zotero Yeah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, <clears throat> it's a good question because sometimes uh, maybe you just know about this bibliographic uh, tools, uh, but then you have started your uh, writing maybe. So you have to make sure all references that you um, want to, uh, I mean, ask Dotero to import it uh, straight away automatically, you have to make sure these references or resources are in the library already. Okay. Uh, uh, one way for you to import uh, what you have, let's say, for example, before this, you use Mendeley. Is it, is it what, what uh, you meant? Maybe you use other uh, bibliographic tool, maybe, then you want to change to Zotero, maybe. So if, it, it, uh, if let's say, you want to do it that way, so you uh, export all references that you have in Mendeley, for example, and then uh, in order for you to uh, import it from Mendeley to Zotero, it's very easy. I sh uh, can I share my screen? Okay, I share my screen first. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. 
Now let's say this is my Zotero. Before this, uh, we uh, exported everything from Mendeley. Then from Zotero, you go to Zotero and then um, go to File and click Import. You have to make sure before that, when you export everything, you have to save it in either BibTeX or RIS. Most of the bibliographic tool or uh, you, I mean, option that is common is BibTeX and RIS. So make sure you save it in this format, and then you just continue and. Uh, uh, select uh, the file from the one, I mean, from the place that you have saved and just open. When you open, so everything will be uh, transferred, I mean, uh, imported uh, into this Zotero, okay? Uh, am I, I mean, uh, answer the question? Thank you, Madam Nur Zalatun. Did, uh, did the questioner understand that, Azizan? Um, I hope it was clear. If it's not clear, you can ask once again in the chat box. I'll move on to the second question uh, from Shikabe. Can I request our trainer to change the same document into other citation styles? So could you show us a different citation style of, 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 on the document that okay, you have? Wait, huh? Let's see, this is the document that I've shared earlier. Um, but I haven't saved uh, that particular sample too. Let me add in a new citation first. Okay, let's say for example, I have this one, click OK. And then the last part, I have uh, added in another citation, like for example, this one. Okay, that's it. So now I'm using, let me show you, this is the a citation style that I, uh, I'm using right now, IEEE. You can see the citation is uh, using number, right? One until five. Okay, now I want, let's say I want to uh, change it to Chicago Manual uh, Style 17 Edition Note. Okay, and then click OK. okay this is my See, this is the document. When I change it, and uh, with, I mean, I just click uh, that uh, the changes uh, has been made immediately. Okay, you can see before this uh, in square bracket number one, but now it's uh, in footnote. You can get information in the footnote since I'm using Chicago citation style with note. Okay. So it's very easy. You can, let's say, for example, you have your uh, thesis paper, I mean, uh, thesis. Uh, 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 using APA or Chicago, but then you uh, want to publish your manuscript as well in uh, a journal, and that particular publisher wants you to have it in IEEE citation style, for example. So it's uh, just by using this Zotero or any other bibliographic tool that you are using right now, you can just change it immediately without doing it from, uh, from zero or from, from the beginning. Wow, so it's it's that versatile, even if we need to edit different uh, style. Thank you so much, Madam Nurizelitu. Yes. And I think it's understood by the questioner. Do we have any more questions? Uh, as you type in the in the chat box, participants, I also have a question. Um, huh? For the downloaded version of uh, Zotero, uh, is it able, am I able to use it without internet access or do I have to be connected to the internet? For the desktop version. Okay, if you use the Zotero desktop, you can uh, use it without internet. But then, in order for you to sync what you have in your desktop with a Zotero server, you have to link it. I mean, sync it with uh, internet connection, or else it won't, it won't be uh, the same information appear in your Zotero desktop as well as on the web. So you have to have internet connection to have it sync. But if you if you use only your uh, desktop without uh, I mean uh, using any other um, uh, computer or any other gadget, let's say for example, so it's not a must for you to uh, sync it. Okay, uh, 
but better for you to sing because maybe next time you uh, I mean, uh, forget to bring your uh, own gadget, you need to go to the library, for example, and use a computer in the library. So if it is synced, then you may use it everywhere and elsewhere, as you wish. Uh -huh. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you, madam. Mm -hmm. uh, another message from Shikai. Got it. Thank you. But the point is, we must have all sources saved in Zotero first before changing any citation style. Sorry, come again. Okay, so this is to do with the previous the previous question, uh, where Brother Shikayeb had asked you to share, uh, you know, changing the citation styles. Uh -huh. So now he's saying, um, if we must, if basically if we change the citation style, must we have all the sources already saved into Zotero first before we can change the citation style? Um, you can change it uh, as you wish, but uh, references uh, that you use must be in Zotero uh, in order for you to link it uh, in this uh, word document. If not, how, it, how can it appear in this uh, word if it is not available in your uh, Zotero library? Okay? In order for you to change the citation style, you can do it uh, at any time, but uh, to ensure all references that you use are here in Word, you have to make sure it's already there in the Zotero library. Am I I'm answer your question? Okay, yes, I believe you did. He, he says, okay. Um, thank you. So, um, uh, yeah, so uh, Prof uh, Hazizan, uh, I believe has re rephrased the question uh, that was asked. Um, she, okay, it said, uh, what I mean is not importing from Mendeley to Zotero, but from words references, an item in words menu to Zotero. Sorry, my microphone is automatically muted, so I cannot talk to explain. It means that he already has several references in Word, but then? Um, okay, so word references in, but it, sh uh, it needs to be imported to Zotero. Yes, of course, as I said earlier, you have to make sure all references that you want to use in the word must be in the Zotero library first, so that you can have a link I mean, between word and Zotero. Okay. Uh, there's another way for you to rebuild index called as rebuild index. I'm, where's my Zotero? Uh, maybe you can use this way. When you add in all references in this Zotero, okay, but then in Word, I believe the references are there already. Okay? And then you want to use Zotero um, uh, after that. So please make sure everything will be here. And I think uh, one way for you to link is uh, go to preferences, okay? Under this uh, search, I think you have to rebuild index from here. You try explore uh, to, to, to uh, make a connection between Word and Zotero by rebuild this index and it will uh, recognize all the references that you have uh, just added in in the in Zotero to make it uh, linked with Word. Maybe you can try this way, rebuild index. Okay? All right, thank you. I hope it is clear. Um, uh, and try, try to do it first. Just click, I mean, rebuild index. But before that, you have to make sure everything is uh, uh, I mean, uh, must be together in Word also has, in Zotero also have everything. Then you click Rebuild Index to make it uh, connected. I mean, between both uh, places. Let's try this way. I think, um, I, think I, I can understand what uh, uh, he's meant. Um, and uh, this is another way, other than import and export, this is another way for you to link your Word and Zotero to make it, uh, I mean, uh, has connection between each other. So that you can see, oh, this uh, A reference is uh, actually connected with 
a reference in Word. So it will, I mean, it, when you want to create bibliography, that is easy for you to just uh, list everything. And uh, it also make sure that it's tally, I mean, tally, uh, the same record will be in uh, Zotero library as well as in, in Word, okay? So maybe you can try this way, inshallah. Uh, if there's any uh, still problem, you can just contact me. Uh, we can try to explore more, inshallah. Okay, thank you, madam. And Prof Hazizan says, I will try, inshallah. Thanks. Um, okay, is there any more questions from anyone? In, as you think and type, I have one more question, a simple one. To do with the, the trash, when we um, choose to you know, put something in, in the trash folder and then it will, it will be in my library and in the trash, is there any way we can completely delete it, like completely off the system? You mean you want to delete everything in trash forever? Yeah. yeah. So there well, is a way to clear it. <laughs> Very easy. You just highlight everything. Highlight everything. Okay. And then you can uh, right click, delete items. When you delete items, it will be gone forever. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's... Uh, I just delete items and everything will be removed from trash. And is there um is there a limit in terms of the space, the storage space on on Zotero, or a limit on um, how we can upload? has uh, some limitation, but no problem. If you have um like uh, one thousand records, it still can uh, capable for you to just keep it there. No problem. Okay, brilliant. Uh, because it's not so big, like the size. I mean, uh, our document size as well as the record size are not so big. So. Zotero has given us some uh, space and it's uh, more than enough for you to just store everything in this Zotero server. Okay, thank you, madam. Do we have any more questions? <clears throat> or if it's not directly, uh, so you know, related to... Okay. Yeah, okay. So even if, if you have a question, maybe it's not 100% like exactly to do Zotero, but maybe related to research or mashallah, Madam Nuru Zaretun, she has a lot of experience in this area as uh, when I read her, uh, her bio. So please ask your questions and let us benefit from uh, her expertise. It's a, it's a very unique and blessed opportunity we have. Okay, I believe there's a new question uh, again yeah. from uh, Brother Shikayev. I'm just wondering if there is any application or citation system, although we did not use it and saved our resources in it, can we use our work in MS Word to change citation? Okay. Was the question understood? <laughs> <laughs> if there is any application or citation system. I was just wondering system. if there is any application or citation system that although we did not use it and save our resources in it. Can we use our work? I understand the question actually. I'm not so clear about the uh, question. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think will rephrase the question. So it means that uh, you don't use any uh, bibliographic uh, tool, but then you want to produce uh, in-text citation as well as bibliography, is it? Ah, okay, if that is so, yes, definitely, because you can do it manually as traditional way before this, during my time, I did it that way. So we just uh, add in one by one, but it's so tedious. Why don't you, because now it, it's, you have more options for you to use all the tools. There are free tools. There are uh, uh, tools that you need to subscribe. So it depends on you whether you want to use the free one or the subscribe, uh, the subscribe one. But then there are, I mean, uh, some tools 
tools for you to use, just use it. Don't do it from scratch because it will waste your time. Uh, you, you can do uh, other things that is more important for you to focus on. So that's my advice, a piece of advice from, uh, I mean, from me to you, uh, because it's very good to have this, no need for you to do it, uh, uh, because in order for you to do in-text citation and bibliography, you need to check uh, the arrangement, whether it's the I mean, correct arrangement, do you follow the correct, uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, the first information, let's say you use APA citation style, the first information might not uh, the same as if you use uh, um, uh, IEEE, for example. It's different. The arrangement is different. Okay, Although information might be the same, for example, like a citation of a book, we have uh, author of the book, title of the book, year, uh, place publication, publisher. Uh, but then the arrangement might be different and then sometimes you have to use bold, sometimes you have to use, uh, you have to italicize the word. Uh, so why, why bother? Why don't you just use whatever, whatever sources that we have? Then uh, no need for you to think or no need for you to focus more on this, but you can focus uh, on other important uh, things, uh, inshallah. <laughs> Thank you, Madam, for that advice. And I'm sure like whoever uses the Zotero will make special dua for, for Madam Nur Zalatun and all the organizers because it will definitely save us a lot of time. Research can be a very yes, stressful yeah, and tedious process. So yeah, this will definitely help. And um, uh, Dr. Haslina also mentioned uh, that, um, uh, like Madam uh, said, that it, it you can do it in Word, but it is only kept in the file. In the Word file, you can find it under Manage Sources, but have to key in manually. And all the references in that particular file. So, uh, and when you use other computers, you mm -hmm. will not have it. And that's the advantage that Zotero has. You can sync between all different uh, devices. Um, yes. Okay. So Abbas says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sorry, I joined the lecture lately as busy with job. My simple question is, these tools are for Arabic language also? Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Zotero, they claim that this uh, bibliographic tool is different as other bibliographic, bibliographic tool because Zotero is uh, a good tool for you to use especially for right to left scripts like Arabic. So you may try to use Zotero um, compared to Mendeley. Mendeley uh, is quite, um, I mean, uh, it's not so user-friendly to Arabic. So Zotero is better. Okay, you can ask your um, uh, I mean, uh, seniors or maybe Dr. Haslina has uh, many experience in Arabic transcript using Zotero. So she also said that Zotero is better than Mendeley if you write your thesis in Arabic. So you can try, no problem. Uh, this is what uh, uh, have been experienced by others. You can experience it yourself okay, to, to feel the, the whether it's correct or not. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Madam Noor Zalatun. And, and like uh, Dr. Haslina said that uh, um, Madam Noor Zalatun, uh, like I myself learned Zotero from Madam Noor Zalatun and uh, oh. have been using it since 2013. So mashallah, this is like uh, Madam Noor Zalatun's uh, Sadaqa Jariya. And now we're benefiting from both Dr. Haslina yeah. and Noor Zalatun. They're both our teachers today, mashallah. May Allah reward you both. And uh, Mendeley cannot deal with footnote style, as uh, Dr. Haslina had mentioned earlier as well, yes, whereas thesis yes, yes. is IRK using uh, footnote style. Okay, so that is an advantage over uh, it. Yes. And Abbas says, okay. That's another, another important point. Yeah, it is another important point. Um, and uh, so Abbas, thanks you for your satisfying answers. May Allah bless you. And... Um, uh, before I go on to Shikaib's next question, I also have a question based on also this Arabic. Um, another struggle uh, related to uh, you know referencing in Arabic is that sometimes you're writing an English paper, but you have uh, Arabic uh, references. And for example, if you're using APA style, you have to transliterate some of the information. 
are there any tools where we can that we can use to help us with this process or do we have to just do it manually okay um uh, uh, there's a problem uh, like that before so in zotero actually you can uh, but it needs skill actually you can add i mean import a new citation style in Zotero so that you can use it as you, I mean, uh, your own way. But it has, um, I mean, technical uh, skills for you to uh, import, but uh, uh, not all people has that technical skills, right? So uh, alternatively, what you can do is you use Zotero, okay? You use everything that has been uh, transferred uh, there uh, automatically, but then after that, you can um, adjust. You can adjust the information you uh, add in i mean uh, uh, you can also change a bit information over there uh, but do not i mean this uh, stage is better for you to do it at the last stage where you have added everything uh, then you do the i mean cleaning process if you do it from the beginning, if, for example, if you add in one citation and then you uh, edit, adjust everything, and then you do another, you do the same uh, for all uh, and each citation that you have added in. If let's say you uh, mistakenly click refresh, what happens? If you click refresh, then it will be, I mean, changed to the, uh, the one that uh, has been um, set by Zotero. So what you have uh, done before will be gone. So it's better for you to uh, adjust it at the last stage. And then uh, can I share uh, my screen because I want to show you uh, uh, how to unlink. Like for example, when you satisfy with everything that you have made, uh, uh, what Zotero has uh, added in and then you have adjust everything. So what you need to do is, make sure from this word okay, from this word you have to unlink citation in order for okay, now I, I show you like for example here i add in bibliography cancer cancer i add in bibliography there so this is the bibliography and this is the citation what happened when we highlight the bibliography for example you can you can see that it's, uh, it's highlighted. When we click in the bibliography section, it, it is highlighted. So it means that it's still linked with Zotero. So if you do any changes here and you click refresh, it will be originally, I mean, uh, go back to the information that has been set by Zotero. So what you need to do is, in order for you to unlink uh, what we have in Zotero um, and in this word, because you have made some adjustment maybe, then you have to unlink citation. This is uh, on the last stage uh, when everything are complete already, then you did uh, several changes, then you unlink this citation. Removing field codes will prevent Zotero from updating citations and bibliographies in this document. Are you sure you want to continue? Then you click OK. Then when you uh, click at any place uh, under this bibliography, it is not highlighted anymore. It means that you have unlinked whatever in Zotero and in Word. It, it, it will be in separate entity already. It is not linked together already. Then now, if let's say you mistakenly click refresh, then uh, it's still OK because you have done everything and everything is uh, all good. Um, no need for you to uh, afraid that is being, I mean, uh, 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 re, re, redone. I mean, uh, it will be um, back to the uh, Zotero uh, uh, arrangement. Okay, so please unlink citation, then you can, you can uh, make uh, any changes after that because it's not uh, linked with the Zotero anymore. I think this is the best way, lah. But you have to do this at the end of the uh, thesis. Don't do it from the beginning. Huh. Yes, the very last step, and then we unlink the citations and manually uh, edit any yes. any that we need. Thank you so much for that advice, Madam Notice and it's, it's very helpful. May you be rewarded for every reference that I need to do. Um, 
So uh, with that, the next question is um, also I uh, based on the same question that I had, I really do uh, pray and look forward to maybe our ICT students from our university or um, one of our universities to actually come up with a tool that would even uh, ease the process further or to come up with a, a, a new citation style that we can import into Zotero uh, to yeah. help us with this. Because yes, maybe especially ICT student can can I mean uh, uh, do the uh, uh, the code maybe the code and then we can import in Zotero to to make it uh, as uh, one of the citation style they they have maybe I I U M style maybe yeah that would be amazing that would be amazing because we use it a lot regardless of which I'm so sorry. Value. <laughs> No problem. It's, it's adding life to, to our session. Um, uh, may Allah bless you for being on here, uh, you know, even though you have responsibilities as a mother. Uh, so, so like I was saying that in all our faculties, we, we use Arabic citations a lot because we add this sort of Islamization of knowledge to our research papers. It's an important aspect of our research. So Arabic uh, resources are so important for us. I do look forward to one day the, uh, having a service where I can import into Zotero. So Brother Shekaib says, according to Nur Zelatun, which tool is the best among Zotero, Men Mendeley, and EndNote, etc.? Okay, um, I cannot say that Zotero is the best, or Mendeley is the best, or EndNote is the best. We have so many citations, I mean, a bibliographic management tool available. You just uh, choose whatever you prefer, because the ultimate goal, <laughs> the objective of this tool is to help you in producing uh, uh, reference, I mean, in text citation, as well as uh, uh, bibliography. Uh, all of this tool, the main thing is, I mean, the main objective is to help you on, I mean, uh, producing this uh, uh, in-text citation as well as uh, in bibliography. So you can choose whatever you like, but Mendeley uh, uh, now is free, but it's been uh, purchased by, I, if I'm not mistaken, Elsevier. So maybe in the future, Elsevier might uh, uh, give you like for example uh, the basic feature is free but then in order for you to use more features you have to pay maybe we do not know but for Zotero why is free because it's open source so it's, um, it can be used by anybody um, for free no need for you to uh, uh, pay any single cents but the uh, function and the objective is almost the same for you to use uh, in helping you in citing, I mean, uh, referencing and uh, citation. So that's the, the most important thing. Uh, if you want to stick with Mendeley, go on. If you want to stick with Zotero, you just go on. But for EndNote, it's a subscription. You have to have um, uh, purchased or subscribed the EndNote version. And if let's say it has upgraded to a new version, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you have to, uh, purchase uh, the new upgraded version because you will have to remain uh, using the same version uh, that you have purchased earlier. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Madam Nolizelatun. So at least uh, we know now that Zotero is a free service for us, especially as, as students on a budget, I think it will be very helpful. Yes. Um, so yes, brother Sheikh Aib says, thank you, madam, and Jazakallah khairan. Uh, do we have any more questions or comments, even feedback about the session? All of that is appreciated in, uh, by all of us um, uh, because we still have some time left before our session ends. So any feedback, any questions related to research or the Zotero tool uh, is welcome. And uh, if there's anyone who just joined the session now, uh, we've been talking about the research tool Zotero, which is a very a free research tool, um, very versatile tool. Uh, it can be used across devices, and uh, there are many different things, uh, many different tools on there. We can sync it with a Word document, and it can help save us a lot of time. So if you have any questions about it, uh, please let us know. Uh, also, I, I'm not sure if it can be answered now, but uh, I believe that Dr. Haslina said that we will upload this uh, recording onto the IRK website. 
Um, is there any particular place on the website that we can search for it once it's been uploaded? Where do we find it on the website? Okay, we also have a question from, okay, so yeah, okay, from the website, yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, from Brother Abbas, I'm not sure if my question is related to this topic, but I'm looking for authentic academic journals. Uh, can the speaker name a few for us for both English and Arabic language? I think this is a good question. Uh, okay, uh, actually we have, <laughs> This is uh, not related to Zotero, but uh, I think it's still related because I'm a librarian, right? So uh, it's no problem, inshallah, I will answer that. Okay, uh, we have so many um, scholarly information, I mean, uh, academic journals that we have subscribed in the library. Um, you can uh, have it, but for now, uh, for the uh, printed version, you cannot access to it since we have MCO everything. But then uh, you can just access it uh, online. We have a, a number of online databases available. Uh, all information in all the databases that we subscribe are authentic, inshallah. Okay, and then you just, um, uh, if you do not know how to access to it, um, it's quite easy. You just go uh, not from the online database. Can I show, um, I mean, uh, share my slide? I mean to publish our article. Oh, you mean you want to publish article? Okay, if you want to publish article, um, this is our this is our library website, right? So now, uh, since all of us are from home, not from the campus, don't go click this list of online databases, but instead you have to go from off-campus access. Okay, and then you enter your bucket number and pin. Um, the problem is, um, I, I've changed my bucket number. I, but I forgot the new one. <laughs> wait, uh, wait. Uh. See, see, for example, from this uh, off-campus access, you put your barcode number and PIN, you click login. Then after that, you will have a list of um, uh, online. I mean, uh, we have two options, online databases and ebooks. You click online databases. And then after that next screen, you will get all databases that we subscribe. So in order for you to check whether um, uh, this journal is good for you to submit uh, for publication, you go to uh, maybe Scopus. Okay, I will show you um, uh, the page for Scopus. Wait. I can show you from here because I forgot my uh, barcode number. Sorry, I changed it. Uh, uh, recently, but I forgot the new uh, bakut. So let's say, for example, I will show you Scopus page. Internet is quite slow, wait. Huh? Okay, this is uh, Scopus. You are, I mean, uh, our library, our um, institution also subscribe to this Scopus. Okay, so in order for you to check uh, which journal or which publication should you go for your, uh, to publish your manuscript, for example, then you can go to this uh, Scopus and then go uh, to sources. You go to sources and then uh, you can download Scopus source list 
into uh, an Excel file that it give you everything. It give you all uh, titles um, uh, that being, I mean, actively in Scopus as well as has been terminated. You choose from there uh, the journal that is suitable for you uh, in terms of the subject matter, for example. Okay, then uh, it's good for you to uh, 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 check whether it's still active or terminated or stopped already in Scopus. So it's uh, better for you to choose the active one. Lah. Okay, then from there, when you have the name of the journal, you go either uh, from Google and you Google the publication, I mean the publisher's page. Okay, in that publisher's page, it will give you author, uh, must have information on author information. Okay, so uh, it will brief you on how uh, for you to submit the publication, what kind of format that they prefer, what are the citation style that they would they want you to use. Everything will be uh, briefly, I mean, explained. I mean, uh, it will be in, I mean, not brief, but uh, it will explain in that website so that you will know what to do next. And then you just submit your manuscript uh, with them until uh, most of the authentic journal, they have peer review stage where when you submit your journal, there will be a team who will review all the contents and then will ask you to do correction if they don't uh, satisfy with something or if they want you to uh, strengthen um, what you have uh, mentioned earlier or correct, correct something uh, in your manuscript, then you have to redo, redo until they satisfy and they will accept once they accept the um, manuscript, they will tell you that this is will be in uh, this journal, the 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 uh, year, and then the volume number. But it will be in in press first. Most probably after everything has done, it will published. So it will take some time actually for you to publish a paper. But this is one way for you to uh, check the authentic uh, journal, which is from Scopus. We have other databases as well, but Scopus is enough for you to just check because they have so many lists of uh, journals inside it so, so that you can just choose from there. The one that is the best, I mean, uh, that suits you the best, then contact, start contact them. Okay, hmm. thank you. That's the flow, okay? Uh, but you have to be patient uh, in order for you to uh, publish paper because it will uh, have a number of stages um, involved. Mm -hmm. And sometimes for your information, you have to pay in order for you uh, to, to have your paper published in that uh, publication, I mean in that journal. But please make sure if this so high, don't uh, go for it. You have so many other options for you to submit your paper. Uh, don't, don't just regard it as this is the only option that you have. We have so many other uh, public, I mean, publishers available uh, out there. Just choose the best, the best one that will not uh, charge you uh, higher, I mean, uh, charges. And then uh, it's good for you to, uh, uh, choose the one with open access, okay? So you will need to pay for the paper, but then after that, people, when your paper has been published, people out there, all, I mean, uh, throughout the world can just immediately uh, read your paper without subscribe to it uh, prior to the, I mean, uh, viewing the whole full text, okay? They can just immediately get the full text and my, uh, most, I mean, probably your paper being cited is also higher, okay? For if, if, if you uh, successfully publish in an open access journal. Uh, that's several tips, lah, inshallah. Okay, thank you, madam. I will definitely uh, use those tips. Um, so, yes, like uh, I'll just read the comments here. Uh, Dr. Haslina says, yes, Dr. Said, please check with KRKHS Journal. Wait, sorry. KRKHS published a list of academic journals in Arabic and English, mainly Scopus and IS. Yes. Huh. IS, uh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Haslina says, yes. Thank you, Dr. Said, please check with KRKHS. 
K-I-R-K-H-S journals. And um, what else is here? Oh, it seems that uh, our graduates need training on library database. Uh, perhaps that is would be an interesting uh, session for us to have at another time. That would be, and, and we would be honored to have uh, Dr. Noor Zelatun with us for that as well. Noor Zelatun, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, also from Dr. Said, in addition, KRKHS has identified and published uh, a list of journals published from various countries. I think it is available in KRKHS website. I've downloaded earlier. And uh, Brother Abbas is Barakallahu Fik or Dr. Abbas. And I hope USAS should get your services to educate us regarding this topic. Um, okay. And so uh, before I go on to Brother Shikaib's question, also just to uh, read what um, Dr. Haslina and uh, and uh, Dr. Uh, Zahid had mentioned about the availability of this video. Inshallah, the video will be available in the IIUM Deputy Dean of Responsible Research and Education and Innovation website, uh, uh, DDRRI website. Uh, yeah, I think that was what was said about the availability. Okay, barakallahu fikum. And then uh, Dr. Sh uh, Brother Shikaib says, since Madam Nur Zeretun is also a librarian and using this platform, if I'm allowed, can I ask one question? That I am in need of some books and journal articles at urgent basis. What uh, can I do during this MCO? These books are not available in the library now. Hmm. Uh, if that particular books are available in the library, in our library, then we have a collect and go service during this MCO. So you can have uh, the form in our library website, then you just um, uh, fill in the, I mean, the form and give us detail of the book. Uh, do you know that you can uh, request uh, books, I mean, to borrow books uh, within this MCO period? Okay, this is the way you go to the library website and then there's a form for you to fill in, give details. Uh, but this is only for those who are inside campus. Okay, the service is only for those who are stay inside campus. So they can collect, uh, I mean, go to the library and collect the book uh, and keep it, um, uh, I mean, uh, maybe a, a month. Uh, it depends on their privilege. Lah. Okay, but if let's say it's not available in our library, we have interlibrary loan uh, service. But I'm not sure other library, um, uh, how, how they, I mean, their function during this, uh, not function, the, the operation during this MCO. Okay. Uh, whether they, uh, I think they do not entertain this interlibrary loan since we have to uh, use, I mean, uh, in uh, uh, courier and everything, uh, I mean, external parties involved in this. So maybe uh, we have to wait until the MCO uh, is lifted, then you can uh, use our interlibrary loan service, inshallah. Inshallah. Mm -mm that answered the question so we can borrow books if we're there uh, at IUM right now and hopefully after the MCO we can go back to inter uh, library loaning so uh, the next question is is it ethical to utilize the sci-hub platform to get articles Okay, uh, thank you, Cikgu Moral. Nama Cikgu Moral. <laughs> so you have to be uh, ethical uh, in using uh, information available on the net. Okay, personally, personally this sci-hub is illegal. Okay, but if you want to use it for your personal matter, because I also use it uh, sometimes, but don't make it, I mean, um, uh, to tell everybody, don't spread the words lah, because this is uh, initially is not good and is illegal. I mean, it's not um, not uh, uh, right to do, I mean, to use it since the owner of the sci -hub, she got all the information by hack, I mean, hacking the information from uh, several institutions, okay, and got the the actually that documents uh, need to be subscribed, 
not uh, easily being I mean, been obtained from internet, for example, it's been uh, need to be subscribed. But then uh, those who know Sci-Hub just keep with you. Okay, don't tell everybody. Don't uh, spread the 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 information to the rest since it's not good. Just you, you can use it for personal matters, no problem. Inshallah, that's my um, personal uh, opinion, lah. Okay, because it's not it's not. Uh, from the beginning, is is in apa, illegal, so it's not uh, legal to legalize. We don't have the, uh, I mean, uh, I cannot tell that this is can be used because it's from the beginning. From the beginning, it's not uh, the the good source. Uh, okay, I I hope you understand lah. Thank you, madam. And uh, yes, they say thank you, madam. Noted, and. Um, the next question is, will IUM library organize trainings on library database for PG students? Definitely, we have uh, organized uh, 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 trainings for undergraduates as well as postgraduates. Um, if let's say uh, you haven't gone any training yet, you can just contact your liaison librarian, or maybe you can ask, uh, I mean, uh, your lecturer to contact the liaison librarian uh, so that all students from his or her class can attend the same, I mean, can get the same inputs from one session, inshallah. So we, we uh, will entertain this uh, such a request. And uh, normally for PG students, they have to request, then we will do. But then for undergraduates, we have a compulsory session for the undergraduate students. Hmm. So if you need uh, more trainings, just uh, email to your liaison librarian or you can go through your lecturer and email the liaison librarian uh, and give uh, your preferred date and time uh, so that uh, we, we can uh, have uh, a good arrangement after that. Uh, nowadays, it's very easy because we can go for online, right? So you can invite as many people as you wish. And we have, a, let's say, for example, one session and everybody can get the benefits, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, madam. Uh, are there any more questions or comments? I think you explained so well, madam, that uh, we're running out of questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's good. Because but if there's if any last have a question, it means that they understand, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. I really hope that they uh, understand uh, all the things and uh, would benefit from this session. Inshallah. Uh, so uh, any um, last last questions or comments before inshallah we will we end the session and we we take pictures we will take a group photo so uh, please do be prepared for it um, we will take a group photo shortly so get ready because we're um, I will ask you all to turn on your cameras um, any any last comments or can we take our our group photo now. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. We can we can take our group photo. Can can I ask you all to kindly turn on your cameras so that we can cherish and have a memory of this uh, great session? And thank you all for for participating in this session. May Allah bless you all. Okay, Fully turning on the cameras. Okay. What about the rest? Allah, we have a big group with us here today, all from all over the world. May Allah bless this gathering and, yeah. and bless all of us here today. Amen. Okay, are you ready, everyone? Ready yet? Okay. And, okay. okay one, two, three. Smile. Okay, one more. One more.
Okay, Netfish. Okay. Okay, one more. <laughs> Okay, done. Thank you. Thank you for taking the pictures. Um, and so with all that, I would like to remind our participants of our final segments in this series of the International Postgraduate Colloquium Research Poster Competition. Uh, tomorrow is our final session. It will start at 9 a.m. There will be an Arabic session uh, talking about um, the, I believe, like the most impactful research in the Muslim world. And then there'll be a motivational session in English to help all of us who are, uh, you know, struggling, especially during these uh, times of uh, the pandemic. Uh, it will be help us to motivate us to complete our research and to conduct our research. And then there will, of course, be the closing ceremony where the final announcement of the winners of this uh, post, uh, poster competition will be announced. So you do not want to miss that. Um, so please join us tomorrow, inshallah. I'm looking forward to seeing you, inshallah. And with that, I would like to once again thank uh, Madam Noor Ziratun and all the respected uh, you know, guests and participants that have uh, you know, contributed, asked questions, answered questions, shared with us their experiences. Uh, on behalf of the organizer, I would like to thank our trainer and for her expertise. I would like to take this opportunity to apologize for my shortcomings in hosting this session, please forgive me. And I wish the organizers, the participants, all the best and may Allah bless our effort in this journey of knowledge. Um, also, uh, I uh, want to say that we end inshallah with uh, Surah Al-Asr and uh, Katharat Al-Majlis. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك جزاكم الله خيرا everybody for the very pleasant session والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته